Yo, what is going on everybody? Dan Tramty here and welcome back to my tutorial series, Browser Noise. This is tutorial number 15 and today is an important day. It is Tone.js Day, which is a legit holiday. It takes place whenever, I don't know, at least one of you are watching this video for the first time. So you can take the day off from school or work and share the video. So it happens every day. Just it doesn't work that way. I'm just kidding. There's a lot I need to go through. So I probably shouldn't be joking around. This is, this is serious. Let's get to business. First, we will not necessarily abandon the P5.js sound library. There are still times in which I opt for it over Tone.js, and in some ways it is a really nice vehicle to teach certain audio concepts. Two, I will continue using P5.js for graphics and DOM manipulation because I want to focus on audio and not have to teach another set of non-audio related tools, if that makes sense. You can stick with P5.js with me, but you might also consider looking at another graphics library like 3.js, which works really well with Tone.js, or maybe you want to try to pair Tone.js with something like React.js so you can build really professional web audio apps. Three, now that we're expanding outside of the P5 environment, there's kind of less of a justification for using the P5 web editor because now we will have to do a bit of work to set it up for Tone.js. And then it's like, if we're gonna do that, why not just work from the desktop? Uh, if you're asking that, good point. In fact, at some point I want to show how to do all of that, but the setup for the web editor is super quick and easy. And as of a couple days ago, the official release of the P5 web editor came out. I'm a huge advocate of the people who worked on it. So we'll stick with it a bit longer to support that team, but you don't have to. All right, go to tonejs.github.io bookmark this page because it's going to be a minute until you memorize this thing. If you even ever do, which you probably won't, I have not, and it's okay. You just go to this page and everything is fine. So in this page, you'll see a ton of information about how to get up and running. There's a hello world of Tone.js, I guess you could say, which is a synthesizer that gets triggered. So we can run that. Very nice, okay. Uh, but more importantly, there's an API and some examples in the API, you can see there's a ton of abstractions. I mean, if you go through this list, it's going to take a long time to get to learn. First of all, notice all of these synthesizers. If you followed the previous tutorials, we've been mostly working with like generate like oscillators, things that generate tone, but these are like, add-ons to that sort of thing. Not only does it generate the tone, but it has like some filtering envelopes or just amplitude envelopes. So there's a lot here, okay? And you have examples, which are going to be a great way to get a sense of all the things that are kind of possible. So I don't know, we can go to this one, which is actually a P5 example. So let's play that. Oh, that bass is hard. All right, enough about how wonderful Tone.js is. We want to use it in our projects, and the way we're going to do that is by going to back to our main page. Let's click on this link that says GitHub, which brings us to the GitHub page, of course. And then we're gonna scroll down, and you're gonna find two links that uh, is basically where all the magic happens. Since it's already you know hosted on GitHub, I'm just gonna go ahead and right-click the minified version copy that link address, open up a new tab, go to editor.p5js.org, and then we're going to click this little drop down arrow, go to index.html, and this is pretty much the only time we're ever going to write HTML in this um, tutorial series. We're going to add a script tag like so, and we're going to close that script with an ending script tag, uh, spelled S-C-R-I-P-T, by the way. Then we're going to point it to the link we grabbed and hit save. We should be all set up. Once we return to our sketch, we should be good. I'm just gonna go ahead and call it tutorial 015. We're ready to go. 
First, let's get rid of the draw function and the create canvas. And I want to make some loops. So I'm going to declare a variable called loop. Well, we'll call it beat, loop beat, so that we don't have any issues, because I think loop is something else. And then let's set loop beat equal to a new tone dot loop. All right. Tone dot loop takes in two arguments. The first one is a callback function. Um, this is going to be where all of our music events are defined. For now, let's just call it song, I guess. There's probably something better we could call it, but we'll call it song. And the second argument is going to be the time interval at which this song is updated. You can think of this as sort of like setting your frame rate for a draw function. You can input the time interval in many ways. For example, you can input them as seconds, or you can describe it relative to the beats per minute. So, so something like 4n for quarter note. And what I mean by that is once we start the tone.transport like so, we will have initiated a huge infrastructure which contains musical information like meter and beats per minute, and it's going to be the thing that drives our loop. Now we can get the loop beat started by calling loop beat dot start, and we'll pass in a zero so it starts right away, and then we'll create our callback function called song. Okay. If you followed along with the P5 drum machine or sequencer or whatever you want to call it, the tutorials that we just finished up with, you'll remember that we couldn't simply just trigger audio in the callbacks because the JavaScript clock is not necessarily ticking at the sample rate we need in order to have a steady beat, right? That was not just a P5 sound library quirk, no. That is just hashtag web audio life, I guess. We need to schedule a time parameter and pass that into our trigger events so that they play accurately. So I'm just going to call console.log for now, pass in time, hit run, and I'll bring up my console and you can see the passage of time is being documented at the rate of our song loop. Now we want to make some sound. Am I right? So I'm at the API. I'm going to go ahead and search for synths. And you'll see we have all these synths. I like drums. I'm going to choose the membrane synth. And we'll look at that. Here's an example of how to get it running. To do it in the P5 style, we'll go ahead and declare a variable called base synth. And then initialize it by setting base synth equal to a new tone dot membrane synth and then calling the to master method on that to connect it to our output. All right, we're so close. Now we just need to go ahead and drop down to our song. And this is where we're going to trigger attack release on our base synth like so. The trigger attack release is going to take a total of three arguments. The first two are going to be the, the note, for example, C1, and we'll talk more about notes later, and then the duration, so an eighth note, so one eighth of the measure. We'll talk more about that later. And then the third one, and this is the super important one, this is going to be time. And remember, if you're ever trying to, to trigger things and you're not passing in time somewhere. Sometimes time is the third argument. Sometimes it's a second argument, depending on the synth. But if you're not passing it in, you are not playing the synthesizer on an accurate clock. Let's hit run. Okay. Amazing. This is amazing. But I was going to have a dance party, but it feels a little slow. So we need to up the BPM just a bit. So I'm going to go up here, uh, somewhere like right here. 
and call tone.transport.bpm.value. I'll set that equal to 140. Now, now it's a dance party. All right, look, I'll see you in the next one. There's so much more to cover in this framework. I'm excited about it. I hope you are too. Later.